Hi there, back to Anderson's TV. This is Rob from the Pro Department. I'm here with David from Roland, who's going to talk through the SEO2 synth. Yes, so this is uh, our first fully analog uh, boutique synth. So, uh, boutique format, but also fully analog. And uh, actually, it's the first in what we call the designer series. So, uh, this is actually made in part with uh, a Studio Electronics. Cool. Yeah. And uh, uh, plenty of patch memory in here, actually uh, up to 512 patches. 512. Yeah, and cool. also a really nifty little sequencer in there yeah. that can do a lot of uh, cool stuff and uh, play in different uh, directions and uh, add a lot of parameter changes and things like that. Um, we have three oscillators here to play around with, plus a noise oscillator, so plenty of room for sound design. Uh, and of course, the usual sort of uh, filter and envelopes and sure. um, um, you know, LFO and so on. Um, yeah, but we can have a listen to uh, just a just a single oscillator here. So now it's just completely dry and one single oscillator. And what you can hear already, though, it's that it's quite dynamic because yeah. you can do yeah. filter velocity sensitivity. Um, and um, we can turn up uh, another couple of uh, oscillators here with the mixer, so you can, you can, you can also uh, you can also detune the oscillators as well. And um, um, uh, on top of that, we also have a delay eff uh, effect here. So uh, this can be used as a normal delay, or you can actually use it for kind of tape effects and stuff as well. So if we turn up the amount here. Uh, I'll turn up the feedback quite a lot and just play around with the time. Then you can get these kind of really funny effect sounds. <laughs> That's uh, cool. But of course, you can just use it like a normal delay yeah, as well. Yeah. Just. Um, so uh, that's just uh, some of the basics. Of course, it's, it's, I think this is useful for any type of electronic sound. So if you want to make like fat bass sounds uh, or uh, kind of more plasticky, vintage, funky. All oh, right. So it's quite flexible. You can do a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, leads as well. So uh, here we have some filter velocity lead again with a noise oscillator. Uh, uh, or if you want to go more kind of 70s old school. Oh wow, that is funky isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, yeah, any type of electronic sound, if you want to uh, get more kind of dirty and gritty. These kind of a detuned sort of I, I'm still into Neptunes. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's like 2001. <laughs> uh, so yeah, those kind of sounds, and you can also modulate actually the sound in, in uh, different ways. So for instance, here we have oscillator sync, which you can which you can use uh, the envelope for here. So you can change the envelope depth of the modul uh, of the oscillator sync. <laughs> Uh, and also uh, other types of modulation, you have the cross modulation here. So I'm gonna, just gonna take a little bass sound there. Uh, so we have cross modeling here, which means you can uh, modulate <laughs> one parameter with another parameter. So uh, as you probably know, like an LFO and an oscillator is essentially the same yeah. thing. So you can uh, use the uh, oscillator too as the LFO for the filter here, for instance. So if I just uh, play this straight here, we can turn up oscillator 2 as as the uh, LFO for the filter. And then you get something like this. So if you go from clean to, to full. Yeah. So. Really effective. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you can also modulate oscillator 2 with oscillator 3. Sorry, you're wrong now. <laughs> So it's all kind of interwoven. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you can change um, the pulse width of uh, of uh, oscillator one and two with oscillator three as well. So. And, and so on. So you can really uh, sort of experiment with the sound design, even if you have no idea what you're doing, just turn some knobs and see what so, happens. So for someone who's yeah. got zero background in synths, would yeah. this be appropriate for them? I would definitely yeah. say so, yeah. I mean, you can, 
Uh, cross modulation is a bit like uh, a, a bit more experimental, but yeah. all the basic simple stuff is also there. So if you just want to uh, tweak a basic sound, you know, you can just go to the filter, use the LFO, and that's all very very easy to use. So I think this would be suitable suitable for both professionals. And it sounds as if most people who want to kind of make more synth sounds, this would be perfect for them. But yeah. if you're using it with a computer, how would that work? Well, it, it has a built-in uh, micro USB here, which so it works as an audio interface, as a MIDI interface, and also so as oh, patch yeah. storage, yeah, all via micro wow. USB. So uh, you can record it directly into your DAW, just connecting this uh, uh, directly via USB. Um, and you can also all of your uh, 512 patches can be imported and exported using this as the USB drive. So wow, that uh, is really useful. Yeah, yeah, really convenient yeah. for for sound design that way. And. Um, uh, furthermore, we also have one uh, nice thing I wanted to show, which is the feedback function. This is essentially you taking the output and feeding it back into the input, and you get a really nice distortion. So, and if you, you combine this with playing around with a filter. Oh, beastly. Yeah. Really good. So, yeah, that's uh, also a lot of fun to play yeah, around yeah. with. Um, and uh, so, that's just some basics regarding uh, you know the sounds and, and those functions. Uh, but then we can go to the sequencer part here, which I think is also a lot of fun to play around with because um, it's quite experimental. Okay. So, or, or I mean, it can be if you wanted to. So um, I have a basic sequence going here. I'm just gonna play that back. So what we can do here is uh, change different parameters. If I go to note, for instance, I have my 16 steps here. So I can simply just, of course, turn them on and off. So now we have a few pauses there. And uh, put some other notes in, so... Well, that's very similar to yeah, what yeah, it was yeah. from the start, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, um, but now we can also start playing around with other parameters, like uh, uh, if we go into parameter mode here, we can change any parameter on the panel, on, on any step, mm -hmm. to any value. So this means I just hold that one step, let's say I want to go to step two, now I can even see the cutoff value I'm going to put in there. So I want to... And that step in. Yeah, so now that's value stored there, so if I turn, it jumps back. Wow. And on the other steps it does nothing because those have no data on them right now. Uh, but I can put like, okay, turn the filter up over there. So... Uh, and that can be, and, all of these can be mapped. Huh? All yeah. of these can be mapped yeah. the same way. Uh, so, or I can do something else. Turn up the feedback. And then turn the feedback down. So now... Feedback on. Off. Uh, so you can do all kinds of stuff like this. What I also like to do, actually, is to play around with the delay feedback. So if we turn the feedback up to the max and then turn it down... It kind of jumps in. Yeah. Oh, no. that's cool. That sounds really good. Yeah, and then... Um, then uh, you can also experiment with the playback direction. So now it's playing just basic linear mode, but then you can also go uh, into the different directions. So of course we can play backwards. <laughs> Suck it, Nelly. Yeah, and now you can hear that feedback yeah. uh, uh, coming in there quite aggressively. <laughs> you can play it back and forth as well. So first forwards, then backwards. Like a pendulum. So it's tons of different ways you can kind of play and yeah. modulate everything. And my favorite, of course, is the random one. Yeah. So now it's just jumping around. It just does it exactly what it wants. And you can hear that feedback lying around until it finds it, that. It, it, it finds that point yeah. and it cuts it. Oh, that's really clever. And if we wanted to, to go back to normal more often, I'll just put another parameter change in where the feedback is zero. So now it's more likely to go back to zero. And now we ended up on eighth triplets, actually. So you can you can change the different uh, uh, what do you call them? The time yeah, signatures. Yes. Yeah. yeah, not signatures, uh, not signatures. but <laughs> different notes, note yeah, types. Yeah, yeah. So eighths or sixteenths and so on. So literally, if you just put in some simple notes, some simple parameter changes, and leave this playing for just like one hour, <laughs> <laughs> it, it record it into your DAW, and you you you're bound to find some find some really <laughs> cool random content parts. just coming through. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so um, um, 
Yeah, that's that's how the sequencer works. You can make up to uh, 128 patterns in there, so there's plenty oh, of space for that as well. Space. Yeah, you can even also change uh, the different, uh, you know, the first and last step. Mm -hmm. So if I go, that's another one of the sort of playback settings. I uh, I choose the first here, so I can set. I want number seven to be the first step, and then I want number nine to be the last step. So now it's just going to jump around between seven and nine so randomly. Yeah. yeah. And now you can hear that feedback thing going in again, and that's because it had a high feedback on one of sure. those steps. So, um, yeah. Now we can have the last at 16, or just, uh, let's say, just the first step and the last step is number one. It's just gonna stay on the one. <laughs> so, and yeah. So, um, this is, uh, yeah, I would say it's very inspirational to play around with and just. Yeah, come up and it looks easy as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, pretty cool sequencer there. Yeah. And uh, as I said, built in audio interface, built in MIDI interface. And um, oh, lastly, I wanted to show you something uh, that I think is uh, particularly cool as well. So uh, it actually, it's a really good friend of the modular world, world so to speak. So uh, we have plenty of inputs here. If you check on the back, we have CV and gate input and even uh, CV uh, for the filter input as well. Right. Uh, you can also um, even trig it from uh, from an external mm -hmm. uh, uh, gate provider. Like in this case, I have the the TR09 sending a trigger signal, so I can trig the sequencer here mm -hmm. now with the TR09. So what that means, obviously, that's not just uh, MIDI sync, but or it's not MIDI sync. It's not a plain sync, but it's actually yeah. triggering the steps okay. individually. So we'll start with a simple beat on the TR09. Play that back. Yeah. And now we'll use uh, the trigger output from the TR9 and just connect that into the trigger input here of the SEO2, okay? So as the instrument, instead of choosing a kick or a snare, I'm gonna choose uh, the trigger output, which I've done actually already. So now we can put uh, steps to trigger the sequencer here rhythmically. So we'll start the sequencer, which means it's gonna start receiving trigger signal. So now, you can, right, you can program it from that side. Yeah, on, on the one and four. And sometimes it doesn't play, and that's because this one has a pause note right. in that sequence. Okay. So, and um, if it's like this and it's clear, it will just follow this. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. So what happens, you can even see where you are in the sequence right here. So if you have, let's say, five steps here and 16 steps here, what happens is, of course, no bar sounds the same because it kind of goes out of phase sure. in a way. So, and of course, this is more fun if you just put some parameter changes yeah, in yeah. again and go kind of really random. Turn up the feedback a little bit. And then we'll add some more steps. Yeah, that's cool. So, you know, uh, that's also another way of coming up with ideas that you normally wouldn't have thought of mm. uh, if you were just like playing with a keyboard. Sure. So I think that's pretty cool as well. And of course, now we're using the TR9 because we like our own products, but you can use any anything that sends out a gate signal. So Just gate, uh, or would it not work with MIDI as well, if you had something that was an external MIDI? Uh, this, this particular function has to be is, CV. Yeah, that's, that's uh, for gate. Uh, sure. But yeah, of course, you can use normal MIDI synchronization, okay. which, is, which is something else. But yeah, so this has a trigger output, and uh, plenty of modular sequencers and other types of sequencers has, uh, have uh, trigger output. So yeah, you can use it with any of those, basically. Cool. Yeah. So um, I think I think that covers most of yeah, the. Yeah, I think that was a pretty, pretty the, in depth. Yeah, go through it. Yeah, and of course. Oh yeah, uh, for those who are not familiar with the boutique series, says before, this is a format the boutique, mm -hmm. and uh, that means you can take this module, uh, you can angle it, uh, but you can also like this. Yeah. Uh, but you Similar can also to the boutique stuff, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. But you can also remove it completely from Sorry. this keyboard and use so, it externally. Yeah, 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 and just use it as a module as well. So pretty good in depth as always. Uh, so you. thanks for coming down. A pleasure. If you want to know more about these, there will be links in the description. They will be with us in the next couple of weeks. Until then, obviously like, comment, subscribe, and see you soon. Thank you.
Hey guys, thanks for watching the Anderton's YouTube keyboard channel. If you play guitar or bass or you're a drummer or you're into music technology, you might find one of our other YouTube channels interesting and I'll put links to those in the description below. So if you'd like more information on the products we featured in this video, please click up here. If you'd like to watch another video from the Anderton's keyboard channel, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like the one I'm wearing, please click down here. And if you'd like to subscribe to our keyboard channel, please click down here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.